What is up, y'all? It's the homie Koru back with another video. We are like halfway ish, a little more than halfway. We're getting through these law, the seven laws, seven hermetic laws as outlined in the Kabbalion. And today we are on the law of polarity. Thank you guys so much for. Uh, sticking around for these videos. Um, this has been kind of challenging to be honest to work through this whole series But it's gonna be so good once it's done and I'm gonna be so um, Proud to have it out there and been getting some good feedback that some people have been really Appreciating my breakdowns of these so I am super happy to do this um, And I'm so glad that once it's done it's gonna be out there. It's gonna be available um, obviously not the first one to do a series like this, but um, sometimes it's good to hear different people's perspectives of the same thing, and it can kind of help maybe one thing here, one thing there can really help something click. So if something clicks, I am super excited for you, super happy, and with that, we're gonna jump into the law of polarity. So the law of polarity basically says that there are two poles to everything, two extremes, and that everything like we've talked about is one thing, but everything that you could think of has a pole to it because our, the whole nature of our reality is polar. It's dual, it's, it's bipolar. It's got two poles of the all and the many, hot, cold, everything like that. So, so the quote, the main quote from the Kybalion is everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same, Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extreme meets, all truths are but half-truths, all paradoxes may be reconciled. Which sounds kind of dumb if you just think about it, if you're just used to just going about your life and being like, not everything's one thing that's totally fucking stupid. I get that, but we're gonna break this down. All manifested things have two sides, two poles, and a pair of opposites. So if I were to say something like everything is and it isn't at the same time, of course somebody would be like, uh, that's dumb, I'm out. And if that's where you're at, I get it, it's totally fine. But the point is, is that everything is and it isn't at the same time because everything has poles. And so one of the big things about the law of polarity is that all paradoxes must, can be rec reconciled. And that's because everything is one thing, everything is the same thing, and it's kind of like our reality is manifested and it's, it is an illusion, but it's not an illusion. And so everything is dual as we see it in real life. I'm me, you're you, the air is the air, the ground is the ground, everything's different, right? But at the same time, everything is one thing. And so there are these ways that we can get to a reconciliation of these polarities which as we dive deeper into this, it'll make more sense. But everything is one thing. And if something seems opposite, if something seems diametrically opposed to something else, the truth is they're actually the same thing and they're just different in degree. They're just different in degree. So spirit and matter are the same thing. They're just different degrees of vibration. The all and the many are the same. They're just different degrees of mental manifestation. The all and the many are the same. And we've kind of covered this a little bit, but everything is the all. The all is within all. And and they are the same thing, but they're not the same thing, right? You, do, you are not conscious of being the all right now. I am not the all right now, right? There's a difference in polarity. And so... The, one of the best, best ways to try and visualize this and tackle this mental gymnastics of a hermetic axiom is to think about hot and cold. What are hot and cold? Hot and cold would be a difference of vibration, right? If something's vibrating much, much slower, then we would say maybe that's cold. If something's vibrating at a really high speed, that might be hot, right? But where does hot start and cold stop? When does something become cold? When does something become hot? If you say something's warmer, it's like, well, warmer than what? Isn't that thing that's warmer than something, colder than something else? Lava cup coming from a volcano is extremely hot, but could you say that's cold compared to the energy at the center of the sun? Where is where is hot and where is cold? And what does what what matters when it comes to what is hot and what is cold? You know, if uh, somebody in Florida is like, oh, it's so cold right now. And here in Colorado, I'm like, yeah, but 
it's negative 13 here in January. So it, is yours warm? Is your 65 degree weather warm? Or is it, you know, you say it's cold, but I'd say that's warm, you know, so it, it becomes relative, right? We, you'd say hot and cold are definite ideas, right? They're definite things, right? Hot and cold, but they're also just relative to each other. They're just poles of the same sort of thing. And so turns out basically everything is like this. So east and west, if you start to go east, when does that become west? What defines the difference between east and west relative to what? They're just poles um, on of, and degrees of the same thing, light and dark. At what point is something light? At what point is something dark? When are they different? When are they the same? When does it stop and start according to what? Musical notes, vibration of sound, right? If you have a, uh, you know, middle C, a lot of people know where middle C is on a piano. Middle C is just straight in the middle, right? But that's still higher than other notes. That's still lower than other notes. And it's the same air that's being vibrated, right? And if we just vibrate it faster, we could get the next note up. If we vibrate it 12 semitones higher, we get the next C up, the next octave. So it's, this, it's the same thing. It's the same note right that c is still the same c technically as the bottom c but it's different in vibration it's a it's totally different and yet it's the same and it's it's a different on the different end of a pole of a spectrum and so hopefully this is kind of starting to like sink in a little bit that everything has poles everything can be trans transmuted by this gradient of low to high and there are technically extremes i don't think we'd ever really see an extreme like you know they say absolute zero is like the 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 lack of vibration which hermetically we would say is impossible but that would technically be a theoretical extreme on one end right whereas the all which is this infinite rate of vibration which would appear still could be on the other end right so and everything in creation or manifestation or the universe is in between you know on to some degree um, but then where this could get a little kind of like more interesting is something like love and hate, right? You know, what is love? What is hate? Could we transmute hate into love? Could we transmute hate or love into hate? These are technically the same emotion, right? If you think about it, if you really start to think about it, I've thought about this quite a bit, to be honest, <laughs> working through these concepts and doing all this stuff. But if what is hate? Why, why would you hate something? If you don't care about it, you don't hate it. So if, if, if I have no concept of something, I can't hate that. If I have no concept of somebody halfway across the world, they're insignificant to me in my life. I don't love them. I don't hate them, you know? So, so if you hate something, where does that come from? Well, I would argue that that emotion comes from a lack of love. There's a lack of, of love. There's a, there's a desire to love, but, but because there's this lack, there's this thing missing that you can't love it, that it's, it's, it's the fact that your capacity for love has been diminished or possibly crushed, which has caused this hate to come out. So love and hate are on the are the poles to this same elusive emotion and the degree to which we love or hate something is just a, a matter of vibration same thing with fear and courage you could take courage and apply it to fear and you could transmute that fear into courage and the way that this is done of course is by way of mental transmutation which is what the kybalian continues to come back to time and time again is mental mental <laughs> mental transmutation mental transmutation which which i'm going to probably put some practical use cases and stuff maybe at the end or maybe at the last video of this series but basically mental transmutation is by using your will using your fire energy the mental fire energy that you have your will to apply a tr a change by rate of vibration almost if you think about induction to change the polarity of any given situation, of any given mental state, of any given physical state. Transmutation 
is how we affect the world. And so by way of mental transmutation, you could change the polarity. Uh, are you feeling slothful? Are you feeling lazy? Are you feeling slow? You can use mental transmutation to transmute that into energy, into activity, into being active and getting out there and doing things. You could, you could by it takes a power of will, which is something that we all have, but to different degrees of uh, capability of control over your will. You can use your will to mentally transmute these vibrations and to change your state, your mental vibration along the lines of polarity. If you can identify and understand the polarity that you're on, you can use mental vibration to change, mental transmission to change that vibration. And by this way, hate can be transmuted into love. Fear can be transmuted into courage. And so everything again comes back to one thing, one vibration. These opposites that seem to be diametrically opposed and different to each other are actually one thing. They're just showing different types of polarity along the lines of that one thing. And they can be changed by mental transmutation. Everything is one thing. Everything has pairs. Everything has opposites. All paradoxes can be reconciled. All truths are but half truths. And that is the law of polarity. The more you work with it, the more you study it, the more you observe it, the more you try to be conscious with it, the more progress you'll gain within the law of polarity. I'd say the last um, hermetic principle that we covered, the law of vibration, is, again, like as I've been going through each of these and as I said in the beginning, they're all kind of these different layers of the onion of, the, of all of the hermetic principles, right? And so the law of vibration is saying, well, things are going back and forth, right? Things are always vibrating, they're always moving. Well, back and forth along what? Well, these laws of polarity, these lines of polarity, that's what we're going back and forth on. But nature and the universe will take its course as it's manifesting these things into their certain degrees. But us as conscious creators, as those who bear spirits and wills, can transmute these vibrations along the lines of polarity to achieve the degrees of polarity and the vibrations that we want. So with that being said, this one was really cool to put together. I really like talking about the law of polarity. I think the law of polarity is super illuminating if you can really get a grasp on it. And that's what I hope all of you guys do. And I hope that I'm helping to do that. With that being said, I'll meet you here next time for the next law. And that's it for this video. Take it easy. Peace.